What's up guys, it's New York Borrowing Tech coming at you. Happy New Year to all you watching. And this is an overview video of five different vintage simplex and exide couch light plates from the 1970s. It's been ages since I last filmed an overview video, like at least a few years now. I've just been crazy, crazy busy with a lot of things going on in life and work and stuff. But I've had some time recently to get back into uploading on Fireworm content. And I'm very, I'm very, very happy to be back into showing you guys some new content and overviews. Starting to the left, right there, that is my Simplex 4050-83 120 volt AC dual bulb light plate. The one right here is a 4051 on a 40580 single bulb 24 volt DC light plate on a 5907 back box. Right there is my Exide couch light plate with a 4040 horn on it. On a 2903 back box because this plate the screws line up with it and it's on a service mounted back box and this one right here is an older early gen recessed 4050-80 this one is a 4051-70 because it's a 4051-60 on a back box that plate right there was installed in 1972 and removed in a school system in 2016. This plate right here, this specific one with the white fire wiring, this came out of the same school that Zach Wolf went to years ago and I traded my Dash 60 plate, the non-recessed version for this plate last middle of last year and this right here is an Exide couch light dual bulb light on a on a service mounted back box it has been almost four years it's been about close to four years four-ish years since I did an overview video and I'm very happy to be back doing this again. I've had a little bit, I've found a little bit of time recently to get some videos uploaded and I've had a little bit of time off. And I started getting my interest back in fireworms. I'm very happy that I started getting some uploads back in on this channel. Let's get to the overview of these devices. The first device I'm going to be showing you right here is the 405083 light plate. And this one's got a Faraday 5810 polarized 120 volt AC horn. Here's the back of it. And it's got a red and a black lead. And this is the 4050-83. It's got the trays where you rest the horn on it. It's got two bulbs on the back. The bulbs on the 4050-83 are different than on the regular 4050-80 plate. There's the, the dot tag. It's got 72 milliamps, 120 volts AC, and the type number is a 4050-83. The difference between this plate and the regular 4050-80 is that the bulbs that come in this plate are screw-ons, are totally screw-ons, like a regular household bulb, whereas the 4050-80, you just clip in the bulb and just slightly turn it to the right. That's all you gotta do with that one. And this plate also has yellow, high voltage yellow, and hot and neutrals. I mean, not yellow, hot neutrals. 
and the horn goes in just like that. Let's get to the next plate. This one right here is my Simplex 4051 24 volt DC horn on a black fire lettering Simplex 4080. And the back box you see here, the service mount ones, the model of this is a 5907. We got, here's the front of the device. There's the, the fire lettering. There's one. And this one also has a 24 volt DC bulb in it. These just take like a PL1822 GE bulb. And here's the back of the of the unit. You see the dot tag here. This is a 65 milliamp light plate, 24 volt DC, and 4050-80. And there's the light socket, which is just like you can just clip it on. And I'm going to show you guys how to how to put this thing on a 4050-80-5907 back box. You got the back box here. Then you put the uh, horn in the plate and wire it up with your ins and outs. And then put the horn with the screws like this and the label sideways. And just, just put these two screws in and screw them into the back box. That was the overview of the, Sim the iconic Simplex 4050-80. Originally when I got this plate, this was my first one. It didn't have a lamp and it had a white fire wiring lens. How I got the light parts was from a trade I did from one of the ADT 512006 pole stations that I have. That I got about four and a half years ago. I think it was like October of 2021. And I trade got this in the got the light parts from another plate that I did in a trade with none none other than die hard collector Mike Wiseman. And he's been collecting for over 20 years. The this lens right here, I got in the trade with Simplex guy, where I had the where I traded the white fire lettering lens for this. And I haven't seen Simplex Guy upload in a while. So, that's this 4050 80. Let's get to the let's get to the Couch Exide light plate. This plate right here is the Couch Exide light plate with the Simplex 4040 horn. This plate is looks similar in appearance, but is a lot different than the 4050 80. And a lot bigger. Kind of similar in resemblance to a 405080 version of the 2903 series light plate. Which I'll show you it right right in a second. Here's the couch exile light plate right next to the 2903. You can see this appearance right here. And the outer lining and the size in general are just about very identical. Except the couch exide is slightly bigger, is made out of stainless steel. This has a triangular, the iconic triangular lens, and is made of plastic. And here's the back of these two. They're very similar in appearance by the front by by the back they are both a lot different it has got a metal so a metal socket and this one's got a rubber a rubber a rubber socket and I'll show you the back of this compared to a 4050-80 in a second 
Let's get to comparing those. Here's the 405080 and the uh, couch light plate back. With the back of the 405080, it's further out and it's like more built, it's more built and has more components than the couch exide light plate does with just has a bracket and this and a socket. This thing has as the rest of the tray that moves around so it doesn't call, cause bulb failure. It's got a reflector. It's got this huge back where it's zip tied, the wires are zip tied. And it's got a screw on lens. It's another thing I gotta show you that's different about these two plates. These couch exide light plates have a clip on lens where you can just squeeze it a little slightly and it'll come out. And here's the bulb that it takes. You can just clip the bulb out. This one takes a 24V, 24 volt, 20 watt light bulb. You just put it in like that, screw to the right, and snap on the lens. Your bulb is all good and replaced and installed. And unlike the another sim another difference between the 4050-80 and the couch exide, the 4050-80 requires a box to mount the horn to the plate, whereas the couch exide you can just mount the horn on the plate itself without having to mount it on a back box. Like you can all you can use is two screws. And you're good. The horn is all mounted on with just two screws. And these things mount similar to also another similarity between this and the 2903 is how they mount. Like you see the two the, the screw holes they mount they also mount very similar. That's why a six a fit a 2975-9168 and a 696-969 back box will fit both of these plates. I've been using a 2903 back box to mount this couch light plate. So let's so that's all with the couch light plate. Let's move on to the uh, 4051-70. And now we're on to the uh, 4051-60 plate, which which I said 70 before because it's on a service-mounted back box. Let me take that off of there. And this this 40 this early gen read non this early this early gen 405080, the recessed version. These were made in the late 60s and early 1970s, from around 68 to 73. And I'm going to show you the back of it. This one has, this one is built a lot different from the 4050-80 series. This is an older model. That right there is an 120 volt AC lamp socket. But the, but mine has a 24 volt DC bulb in it, and the horn is a non-polarized Gamewell horn, which is basically the same as an early, an older 4051 slash Faraday 5430 horn, which I have a 5430 on the shelf right now. And there are also many other differences between these two plates. These have the, this one has the trays for the horn in line with each other and they are further back. The 4050-80 has the uh, trays offset from each other and they're a lot shorter. Here's the two of them right next to each other from back to back. And the light sockets are a lot different too. 
You can simply see the 4050 has more components than the dash than the dash 60 early gen 4050 dash 80. And here is it compared to the couch Exide light plate. Also very very similar in appearance but different different light sockets. Originally this plate originally had a light a light cover like that. Like this one of these, but this one is the screw-on version, the second gen dash 60 from the early 70s. This one came with a screw-on lens originally. Then it got the lens was replaced with this current one somewhere later on. And this one is in this one's in pretty this one's in very this one's in pretty good condition. And now on to the remote light version of that. This one is a couch exide remote light. This one also has a clip-on vertical fire lettering lens. And two of these bulbs, two of these small bulbs. These take PL1822 bulbs. These are 1829s, basically the same as an 1822. These are 24 volt bulbs, and the regular 4050-80 series plates also take these smaller bulbs. Whereas the 4050-83 and the Couch XI light plate take bigger bulbs like this. And the 4040-60 series also take bigger bulbs the screw-on version I'm gonna go over right now what type of what type of bulbs these plates take this one right here the dash 60 and the 4050-83 take these type of screw on these screw on bulbs the 4050-80 and this couch exide remote light take a PL1822 or 29 bulb and this couch exide light plate takes a bigger bulb it takes one of these And that's all I have for you for these plates. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe. Go follow me on Instagram at New York Fire Alarm Tech. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. See you guys soon.